have a comment. Um, it's probably going to burst a lot of bubbles, but um, we are a global unit, and I know that there is a concern about what's happening here, but that doesn't mean that there's not a concern other places. And you talk about Roundup being sprayed in a development. Well, think about all the parks and the cities and uh, what's happening outside this little pocket of the world. And um, the other part that I want to say about that is that having had a landscaping business many years ago, I've used a lot of these chemicals and so have a lot of other people use these chemicals. And things have changed considerably over the years since Silent Spring was written. Uh, there have been more studies, there have been more laws, there have been pesticides taken off the market because of their uh, lack of safety. So I want to acknowledge that changes have been made and that there is progress even though hearing that there's pesticides in your urine is scary. There's probably pesticides in the urine of every single person in this country. Yep, that's, that's right. right. That's it doesn't right. make it right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't make it right. But there is progress, and there has been progress over the years. I can remember in the 80s when I started using chemicals to, that's the spraying type of chemicals, uh, I didn't wear gloves, I didn't wear eye protection, I didn't wear a mask, you know, and then I look back after people start saying, you've got to start doing this, and yes, had I known that before, you're darn right I would have had that stuff on. But now my question. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Uh, I'd like to know how you will differentiate between, in this study, how you will differentiate between uh, people who were born here and grew up here their entire lives and are still here and they're in their 60s, 70s, 80s. I don't know how old the, the oldest one is, but um, I do know some people who are up there who were born here and have stayed here their entire lives versus people who have come <clears throat> from other places um, and have been here a lesser period of time. Mm -hmm. I'm just starting five years here. Mm -hmm. But compared to 80 years here, how will you be able to differentiate that when people participate in this study? If I think I understand your question, um, we won't be differentiating between people who've been here a short time versus people who've been here a long time uh, in terms of being eligible. No, um, I don't mean that. Uh, well, that would be an important piece of information we would collect from people. We would want to know. It's not, uh, it's not going to be, again, criteria for why you would be included in the study or not, but would be one of those pieces of information that we would collect. And would be, you know, something that we would... That wasn't my question. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. My question Try was with the results of the study. Uh -huh. If you have someone who's been here four years uh -huh. and someone who's been here 84 years, uh -huh. how will you... Will we report it out? How? How do you differentiate between, you know, who knows how long this stuff has been in the land or the water? Or okay, water. I think I, I think I understand. So remember um, that I said if you're talking about health, maybe you're talking about health. Uh, maybe the health the health effects for people who've been no, here a long time. Not really. Okay. 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 Right. Would people that have been living here longer have higher levels in their blood and your yeah? Than I your see. People? Okay. Yes. Yeah, the versus people who haven't been here right. as long. Okay, so so um, are we expecting to see a difference between people who have been here, or would we would we expect to see a difference between people who have been here and may have been exposed for a longer period of time versus people who have been here for a shorter period of time? Well, I would guess that there would be a difference, but you know, then you have the whole thing of uh, where people came from and what was happening there. So, right. I just wondered if that's fit. If that's a part of the study, you know, to try to determine if, you, if there's more pesticide levels in people who have been here longer, okay, then, you know, 
Okay, so the, I, the, 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 at, 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 at its base, the fundamental question you're asking is, do some pesticides stay in people's bodies longer, or, or would the impact be longer over a longer period of time than versus people who've been exposed for a shorter period of time? Yeah, I know some And what would we be able to detect in people? Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, so that I'm going to turn back to my toxicologist and, and ask, of the pesticides that we know of, especially in urine, would we expect... Um, atrazine and 2,4-D to uh, be persistent bioaccumulate. bioaccumulate in people. Um, <coughs> I know this is probably going to annoy some people, but atrazine and 2,4-D are pretty quickly cleared from the body. <laughs> and in fact, it is that piece of information combined with the the urine data that we saw, where we saw atrazine in people's urines prior to an application that we were, any applications we were aware of, as scientists we were actually all quite surprised to see that atrazine in 2,4-D because we wouldn't expect to see any substantial concentrations of those chemicals in people's bodies and, and in people's urine unless the exposure was ongoing. So that was a concern to us. That was one of the things that made us think, we're interested in more than just looking at the spraying. We're interested in people's drinking water and in people's food because that could be a potential exposure that is continuous and it is ongoing um, beyond any spraying that is going on. But atrazine and 2,4-D for you know, however bad you may think they are be, and they're not, you know, they're not designed to be good for people or for any organism, honestly. But they're not like chemicals like DDT and and those other chemicals which are taken in and are sequestered in the body fat, in, in which case means I would have a whole bunch. But they don't they don't sequester in the body fat. They're they're quickly um, excreted from the body, and generally they come out unchanged. Um, to a certain degree, some of it's metabolized, but it's not something that accumulates in the body. It, it, um, if you're exposed, we expect to see most of those chemicals gone within a few days. Garlon? Most? Most of it gone within Garlon? a few days. So, uh, that, that's just, uh, you know, believe me or don't, that's the, that's, you know, the way that these chemicals pass, are, you know, the way they go through the body. So it, it's a surprise to us. Hi. 